You know, the best way to recognize a good cook is to look at someone working in the kitchen, how efficient people are. I always recognize great cook this way. I remember when I was a child, from my aunt to my mother and all that, there was a great economy in the kitchen. Economy not only in the dish itself, economy of motion or moving and so forth. And this is often what makes great cook, much more than other decorated plate and so forth. And today we're going to emphasize budget, I mean economy in the kitchen. The way the student has to do it to survive, you know. And with the chicken here, we're going to do three different dish. The first thing, of course, is to bone out the chicken. And uh, I'm going to remove some of the fat that we are not going to use here. And remove the leg. Again, I lift up the chicken so that I cut the skin and I use the weight of the chicken to do this. Cut the little oyster here, bring the chicken leg forward and break it open. Cut at the joint, that's it, and pull out. Remove the chicken, same way on the other side, you cut the skin, the oyster, bring it back up to crack it open, cut through the sinew. Now I have my two legs. Now I have the two wing. This is going to go in our fricassee that we can cut into pieces right here. Right, and now of course the more tender part of the chicken which is the breast first covered with that layer of skin and that layer of skin we are going to use it also or some of it at least cut between just next to the bone here grab the meat at the end here and pull on it again to get that breast of chicken you know so what we want to do in that dish we want first to separate the meat from the bone and the skin. So this is the two breasts. This is the bone. That's part of the bone. Again, here I'm cutting the drum stick and uh, the thigh. Again, removing the skin. You can use a towel for that. Makes it easier. Here, that's part of our meat. I could bone this out also, but I mean we're going to leave the bone in. Again, here and the drumstick this way and this way I'm going to cut the end of the drumstick actually I need the bone here also that's it this is the meat this is the bone the bone have to be cut in smaller piece also use a large sturdy knife you know and notice that I'm using the back of the knife, this way. And some of the skin here. Now, some of the skin, we cut it into little dice like that to do crackling, you know. We're going to do a little bit of crackling with that skin. Actually, this is what I'm showing you now. So we'll take basically most of the skin to cut it into pieces like this. And what happened to it after, I put it to cook right here on the stove. And as you can see, this one, the crackling, is about done here. Then those bones here go into that large saucepan and fry by themselves to do our second dish, which is a fricassee of chicken with brown rice, you know? And third, what we are doing, is the meat, the choicest part right here. That we are going to do a chicken with cream sauce and fricassee with it. So, the first thing that I will do is to start cooking that chicken. However, you know that the dark meat will cook much faster than the white meat. Or this one, actually, if it cooks too long, it's going to get uh, dry and fiber. So what we'll do in this, we put the dark meat first. Now notice here we have no fat or anything like this. We put about half a cup of chicken stock in it, about a cup of white wine in there, and into this we have some uh, onion, bay leaf and thyme. And this is the seasoning for the chicken first. 
about three ounces of onion or one chicken. This would be about enough. So what we are doing today is not really a menu. I mean, you would not want to serve those three dishes together. But those emphasize economy in the kitchen and that's what I want to show you today. So that goes with it. We put it on. I put a dash of salt in this. It has to come to a strong boil and it boiled about seven, eight minutes for the dark meat to be partially cooked. Then we put the white meat in it for another five, six minutes to finish both together. So I'll put that here. Meanwhile, I want to start the soup. As you can see here, I have that crackling. And uh, maybe it is a bit too much uh, fat in there, which has been rendered. So I will pour out most of the fat and leave like one tablespoon or so of fat. And on top of this, we're going to saute the onion. I have the soup here. I have a large onion, I have some garlic, I have some herb, herb de Provence, a mixture of herb, and split peas which have been washed. Those split peas, of course, are very high in um, insoluble fiber, and it's quite good. So, let's first saute the onion. You know, if you have a large saucepan, if you have a large saucepan to do your soup, or a, a large soup pan, you can render your fat directly, I mean the skin, you can render it directly into the, your soup pan. Then you put your onion, then you put the garlic and so forth, and you don't have to dirty another, um, another pan that I have here. Okay, here it is. So I saute this a little bit, garlic to it, Separate a head of garlic by heating. You heat it on the side. Couple of cloves here that I have in there. And that's going to go into our soup. Doesn't have to be very finely chopped, just coarsely crushed like this. Maybe another one. It's going to cook a long time. We have the herb de Provence there on top of the seasoning. Can put my salt even now, everything here. And basically we have all of our ingredients here for the soup. Take this, put that into a large stock pot. The split peas, cold water on top of it. Bring that to a boil, you want to bring that to a boil, and you want to simmer it gently, you know? So this is out of the way. Now we can move on to the third dish, which is the fricassee, you know? And the fricassee here, we are doing it with a brown rice, which has a lot of fiber also, a tiny type of brown rice. But as you can see, and that's what's important, if the crystallization of the juice and how brown those are, that will give you a lot of taste. You know, there wasn't that much fat in there. Remember, most of the bone and the skin was taken out. So we're going to start with the onion again here, sauteing a bit of onion in the fat. You see, with a little bit of imagination, you can really do a lot. And if you decide that uh, you only want to do, for example, that type of dish, you go to the supermarket and you buy a, uh, a package of chicken back and neck and just brown it and start that dish with rice. You can really feed a large family with a little bit of uh, food. I have some garlic and some jalapeno paper here. Oof, strong. Now, mix that well. Then I put the rice in it and I have olives here. All chopped olive, you know. Now, if you feel the olive are too expensive, then omit them. And I have muscat resins. Those are dry, large resins. Again, you can replace with another type of resins or fig or whatever you want. Doesn't have to be this. We have some cilantro, which is uh, that spicy type of uh, Chinese parsley, so-called, sometimes Japanese parsley. Then, one large olive or a little can of olive uh, if, you, if you don't have fresh 
a little can of tomato if you don't have the fresh uh, tomato. We mix that together and finally the water. Remember you put approximately half of the amount of water, I mean uh, double the amount of water than rice. You have a cup of rice, two cups of water. We bring that to a boil, you know, it's important. Then we are going to cover it. I think I put the lid uh, somewhere here. Bring it to a boil that has to cook for about 50 minutes. And uh, talking about this, I think that the leg of chicken have been cooking for a while, so I'll put the breast to finish with them in that liquid here. Another eight, 10 minutes. And during that time, I can serve the soup. I have another soup here, which is cooked, that I did before, very simply done. And again, in our budget, you know, I had some leftover bread. You slice your leftover bread and make crouton. That's going to go well with your soup here. So here is our soup, which is quite thick, you know. And our recipe are for four, and believe me, this is plenty for four of that thick, heavy split soup with crouton. And this is terrific. That can make a whole meal in itself. You know, economy is so important in the kitchen, as we know, but who knows more than the student? And who knows more than my daughter? <laughs> Claudine, who goes to school, who just finished at Boston University. So what did you bring here? Well, I brought all of this stuff from my refrigerator because it went bad. And I don't know what to do with it, and I don't want to waste it. Because mm -hmm. I don't have enough money to waste it. You know what I do? I go to the supermarket. I go at the end of the supermarket to buy things like this. Because I buy it for a fraction of the price. So you have to open it. This is perfectly fine inside if you do a cold flow or anything like this. I mean, this is nice and beautiful, you know? And this is what you have to look at inside. I mean, look at that leak here. Yeah, that, but how do you know it's not all rotten? That's a good point. Well, you have to, you know, it's firm. Touch it, you know? Uh -huh. And you can open this a little bit and see that, except for that first leaf, which look really terrible, maybe the second one, maybe the third one, by the time you get here, you know, you cut it this way, and basically, all of that is very good. I mean, you're going to do a terrific soup with that. Yeah. This is a lot of leek, and I know you like leek. You know, if you, if you shop those and put them there, that's great. Look at the peas here. Here, you can do a couple of peas and see, even though they are all yellow on top and so forth, you can look the inside. Well, the inside, the peas are not rotten. You know, they are perfectly fine. You put them in soup, you put them in stew. And look even at that, at that herb here. This is theoretically fresh herbs, you know, like fresh oregano. Yeah. It dries oh, out, but bad. remember, you, you buy dry herbs, so, you know, in yeah. between it's perfectly fine. Especially if you buy it in the produce, you know, which is a third of the price. Look at those tomatoes. Well, that tomato is rotten. You can't do anything with it. This one is just soft, you know, you can put it in a soup. Not in a salad, but in a soup. Yeah. And the mushroom here. See, people always are afraid. You see those mushrooms? Look how soft they are, you know? Well, those mushrooms are older, but I tell you they have more taste than the small white button mushroom. Oh. And they are much less expensive, you know, they, they, they basically don't cost anything. So what do you do with those vegetables in your refrigerator? Usually I throw them away. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't, it in. Well, what, uh, look at that, uh, this celery is yeah. good in soup. Just have oh. to peel it, you know. Yeah. All of that is usable, and you're going to save a lot of money. And if you save a lot of money, I'm going to save a lot of money, too. <laughs> what, uh, what did you bring here? Well, um, I saw you making the chicken fricassee, so I made one, too. Uh-huh. And it's a little different than yours. I see that. Um, I used eggplant and zucchini, and I only use the gizzards. Oh, you only do the gizzards. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's a good idea. So well, let's, let's move over there and see what... Uh, what? Oh, I see. So you use those gizzards there. Uh-huh. Okay, you didn't bone out the chicken. No, I can't bone out a chicken. This is a lot easier to do. It's not that expensive. 
And I mean, I saw you use the skin, you used the meat, you used everything. You didn't use the gizzard, so I figured. Oh, you use the gizzard, okay. I use the gizzard. And I know that you have zucchini in there. You love zucchini and, and eggplant. Eggplant. That mm. was left over in your refrigerator, right? Yeah. No, that's it. <laughs> well, I tell you, you know, the meat of the, the, the chicken, you better cover that, it's going to, to get cold. Okay. The meat of the chicken, we're going to finish it up, and this is. Uh, you know, the most elegant dish out of this, and I have those four pieces of meat, you know, the two breasts that I have there, and those two legs, which each one we cut into two pieces. Remember, I poached that in white wine, you know? Okay. And uh, we're going to do a cream sauce with it, with tarragon on top. I think I'm going to remove this, and look at what I have on this side here. Why don't you give me the cream over there? This is going to be fattening. It is going to be fattening, you think so? That's a good point. I mean, a young lady like you always watch your diet, right? I try. <laughs> yes. And uh, so, see what we have today? I have a chicken here, which I'm going to thicken with a little bit of potato starch, dilute it in water, you know, just to get a nice, uh, a nice viscosity, you know, with it. You know, that thicken in contact. Wow. As soon as they touch it, thicken. Actually, I put too much in it. Uh, and when we want to put tarragon, I have chopped tarragon here, you know? Okay, some chopped tarragon there. I can stop it. And uh, in fact, I can have a little more tarragon. What do you think is the most caloric the dish? Remember, I did the chicken in cream sauce, the fricassee with the bone inside, and that soup, you know, that we did with the... What do you think is the most caloric? Well, the chicken with the cream sauce. This is the one with the least amount of calories. It's almost half of the amount of what's in the soup. And the fricassee is in between. So you see, you have to realize here, I put four tablespoons of cream. That's mm -hmm. one tablespoon per person. But I had no fat to start the chicken wing, you know? Oh, okay. No fat, nothing. Give me a little bit of water from there. Okay. And uh, we are going to... Uh, See, this can go back in the sauce now, and it can stay a little while and, uh, you know, to, to develop more taste and so forth. It's a bit too thick, so I put some more water in this. Okay. So we can serve this and uh, arrange it nicely on a plate. I mean, what we have done today is not really a menu. I mean, you would not want to eat the chicken no. with the cream sauce, <laughs> with your fricassee, <laughs> and with the soup. No, I don't. But you know, you can eat the soup and make a whole meal by itself with crouton and all that. It's very thick. Mm -hmm. You like soup? Yes. With a salad? Yeah. Soup? It that makes would be a perfect good. meal. And what else would you do with that? With the. Well, either with the bone or with another type. What would you serve with your fricassee there? Um, probably just a salad. Just a salad? Yeah, because well, this way it's inexpensive. Why don't you cut some of this on top of your uh, thing? Okay. You, you want to use the knife? Or? No, I'm going to use scissors. <laughs> Scissors is easier, okay. So a bit of decoration and taste, I mean. You see, if you go in a produce, sometimes it's going to cost you practically more to buy that bunch of chive than, uh, you know, if it's not in season, than buying the rice and the bone that you put in there. I mean, that, that, uh, that chicken uh, big dish, I mean, costs basically nothing, right? Mm -hmm. Now, of course, if you come home, you get that out of the garden. Yep. It doesn't cost you anything. <laughs> okay, so you remember your grandmother always make a chicken in Cream sauce, you know? I'm sure you're going to tell me that it's mine is far to be as good as hers. <laughs> I know that, but see, we'll put a piece of the back leg and half of a breast because we have both, you see? So how many people would this, this well, be for, this one? Four, you know? A piece okay. of white, a piece of the dark. And a little bit of sauce on top of this and more tarragon. Uh... Oh, it smells good. Smells good, huh? Okay, you want to put a bit of uh, put a bit of those herb on top, and that's it. Okay, well now that we're done with the chicken, what are we going to do for dessert? Well, that's a good point. You know, you don't want to finish your meal without dessert, right? No. Well, what do you think if we do fruit? You want okay. to know about fruit? Yes. I have a bunch of rotten fruit here. Oh, you know, <laughs> often we buy fruit. Your mother buy a lot of fruit. It stays on the table most of the time. It gets rotten. What do we do with it? Look at those, you know? 
You know, there is a lot of fruit there, different color. We can do a nice fruit salad with it. I'm going to do a sauce, and you can start uh, taking some of those fruit to cut them into the sauce. This see, looks really bad. Yeah, that's bad. We'll have to cut that piece off, you know, and you can use it. But see, I put a little bit of uh, orange marmalade here at the base, and you see that rotten uh, lemon, uh -huh. soft and all that. I still have enough juice in it. You need a bit of juice so that the fruit don't discolor it. Look at that. Oh, that's bad. Let's see, see that. Look. Yeah, hold it. No, that's pretty bad. No, that you can't use. Yeah, that you can't use. Mm -mm. Okay. Now cut cut the the thing directly on top of the the salad. You know when you cut it, so that okay. we put it directly in there. Okay. Now you want to cut uh, the 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 strawberry. Just cut out the bad part. You know. I mean uh, this one. See that lower part is no good. The rest can go in it. I mean, look at that. Uh, this is no good. This is a red yeah. blood orange. This is rotten here. So I'll take that piece which is rotten. The rest I'm going to peel it and put it inside. Okay. Why don't you cut the banana? See the banana, how black it is on the other side? Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's black here. You see that? Yep. But it doesn't mean. In fact, you know, when it's black very often, uh, it has a nice taste when you have those little black dots. I think that's when the banana is really ripe. Actually, that's when I like it the best, you know? So. See this, I cut just in pieces like this, and your banana also, just cut it on top of it. You want to do a mixture of fruit, and you want to use what you've left over. Okay? Okay. You do that at work? At I mean, school? At school? <laughs> yeah. Well, I try to, but not always. Doesn't always work. See that apricot? So rotten here? Well, if I cut that part off, you know, it's perfectly fine underneath. So that's what we... We do, and you have a diversity. I mean, you have all kinds of different... Uh, this also is soft on one side. I remove that piece. And the rest of it... It's not terrific, but... Well, that's pretty rotten, right? Yeah. I won't put it. Okay. You like fruit? Yes, I, of course I like fruit. But you know, I know that at home, uh, you rarely eat fruit unless I peel the fruit and <laughs> give it to you, right? So why don't you cut this into pieces? Okay. Right, cut this into pieces, and that's it. Uh, we have a full bowl here for five, uh, three or four cherries I can put in it. Why don't you mix it? You know, you want to stir it a little bit so that it looks nice. And so, so that to put the juice, you know, the lemon juice comes on top so that it gives you a lot of uh, nice taste in it. Okay, that's it. Now you can uh, leave it there, you have nice color. You know, it's, it's not because we're doing budget food that we have to eat standing up in the kitchen, huh? I we can have not. a nice setting. Let's go to the dining room, you know? Okay. Okay, so you go first. We're gonna enjoy, we have a lot of food to eat today. Yes, I think we're going to food. eat the whole thing? Uh, I, I'm not gonna eat the whole thing. You can eat the whole thing if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. I mean, look at the menu that we have. A lot of food, it is not a menu, really. It is a mixture of different dish, but all done with one chicken, so it's quite uh, inexpensive. First, we have, remember that soup with the split pea soup, and that's done with a bit of the crackling and with the leftover crouton outside. This is very nourishing. You can have a whole meal with that and a salad. Then we have our two fricassee that I'm going to taste, you know, a bit different. I mean, yours is probably easier that to do than mine. And finally, we have the chicken with the tarragon sauce. And remember, you thought that was the highest calorie one, actually the lowest of all of it. And this is quite elegant. And finally, all our leftover fruit into a great salad there. Very, uh, you know, a lot of fiber in it, beautiful color. I mean, I know that you're worried about uh, time. You know, you don't have time to do things. I know you don't have money to do things. I know you, don't, you, you want to lose weight, so what do you do? Um, well, usually I end up cooking like this because uh -huh. it's easy. It's inexpensive, which is really important, and um, I can also leave it in the refrigerator for a couple of days because I eat out two, three times a week. So if I don't eat it the next day, it's still good. But you cook occasionally. Yeah, I cook. I cook three, three, three four times well, a week. Well, I'm proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> and I hope you're proud of her too. And uh, uh, I hope you're going to try that dish, or I mean the concept of it, certain of those dish. And in the whole meal together, if you test a portion of each at about 900, 925 calories, which is not that much. I hope you enjoy the show today. It was great to have you here, Titin. Thank you. Happy cooking. Thank you.